Anyway, guys, here we are once again on uh, my friend's pilfered scooter. Well, he's not pilfered. He's just borrowing it. He's going <laughs> to, I'm sure he'll return it uh, once he's done. He'll just take that, that chip that he ordered online out of it off the eBay and uh, whatever. Anyway, he's just letting me borrow it so I can make these obnoxious ass videos. So today I'm going to show you a little project I've been engaged in for about the past, I don't know, six or seven years, give or take. I've just been, uh, you know, uh, planting uh, trees, uh, sometimes uh, with permission, mostly without, uh, because uh, the city I live in kind of dropped the ball so hard on their uh, uh, public beautification efforts. You know, and I kind of like seeing trees makes, uh, makes uh, the nausea a little bit uh, uh, easier to deal with, uh, makes the, the third of uh, uh, life in modern society easier to uh, swallow, you know, helps it go down easier. So I'm going to show you what I've been doing uh, over here the last couple uh, last couple uh, years uh, planting trees around this up here. Anyway, so I had to go stop at the taco truck and get a burrito, uh, but uh, I'm back now. So anyway, you can see this is where the, uh, the, the double-decker freeway used to be that fell down in 1989. Just imagine, you know, about an 80-foot tall, uh, just entirely concrete covered in particulate exhaust. Uh, pretty bleak. Again, it collapsed, killed about 40, uh, 40 or 45 people in it. Anyways, uh, it's completely sealed off the neighborhood, but that's gone now, so they put this little park in there. And the city planted a, uh, well, they didn't do so good of a job. They planted a lot of these roses, which are dying, and they planted a, a bunch of trees that are native to the East Coast, uh, where you get summer rain. We don't get that here, of course, so a lot of them just kind of look like shit. All right, there you go. Uh, the landscaping over there, you can see the, the homeless have had to set up camp over there because they got nowhere else to go. Get some mulch piles getting dumped. That's actually pretty good. Uh, that over there is, uh, let's see, I did a bunch of illegal tree planting. That's one of mine. And then, uh, of course, these are a, a couple of mine as well. Rudy's both from seed. You got a Tecate Cypress, a Santa Cruz Cypress, and a Guadalupe Cypress. That over there is a uh, lodgepole pine. I tend to use the cypresses because uh, they do pretty well with the summer dry. So, you know, as long as you plant them in the winter wet season, uh, it'll, they'll, you know, they'll make it through the summer okay, and then they just uh, kind of go dormant in the summer, and they start growing again once it rains. Uh, let's hope it does rain. Uh, over here, you got some coast live oaks, Quercus agrifolia, grew these bastards from seed too, uh, from acorns again, uh, planted uh, without any permission, but they seem to be doing fine. Again, the city kind of dropped the ball, so I don't think they mind too much. Most of what they planted has died, uh, or is, you know, like uh, take for instance that magnolia. Over there, you got a Japanese maple, uh, which uh, is kind of a horrible spot for it. Again, these are from, uh, a lot of the Japanese maples are from, Almost the uh, landscapes that almost resemble temperate rainforests in uh, Japan. They don't do very well in an area where it doesn't rain during the brutal heat of the summer. Well, it doesn't get brutal here. It's Oakland, but you get the point. But uh, the important thing to do here, though, if you do want to start doing this, is you got to mulch. Mulching is very important. That's why I get the tree companies to uh, dump the mulch. Uh, again, it often tends to be, well, the whole concept of legality doesn't matter so much. It's uh, intention. And, and as long as you know what you're doing and if... Uh, you know, anyway, well, let's not get into that. But the, the important thing, though, is this mulch breaks down, okay, and it, it builds soil. You got to remember, there was a double-decker freeway here. This was all this compacted concrete shit. You know, I've dug in this soil. I've probably dug over a 1,000 holes in this soil all, all up and down this whole fucking parkway because I've been doing this for a while, and it, the soil is shit quality. You know, you need a pickaxe in some cases. So the best thing to do in that case, when you're digging a hole, you know, in the winter, you just chop it up a little bit with a pickaxe, uh, dig, I, I don't use a, a spade shaped shovel, I use a trenching shovel, it's a little narrower, gets a little bit little bit more of a dig in there. And then uh, you gotta just dump the mulch. And not a thin layer, don't be chintzy with it, you need at least 8 to eight inches to a foot of mulch. That'll break down, uh, you know, by the action of the microbes and the fungi in the soil and what the shit. That'll break down to at least a quarter of that, uh, that depth, you know, so if you got a foot it'll end up being, you know, 3 inches. Uh, by the uh, by the end of the season once it's you know it's been wet and the soil's broken down the mulch is integral to rehabbing the soil you get the fungi in there uh, you get uh, all kinds of microbial life it enriches the soil you don't got to use uh, pesticide shit like that roundup you know the, the lazy bastards were coming through here they got the contractors coming through and they would just spray roundup you know which of course kills the weeds but it kills everything else so i just told them to you know get the fuck out of here uh, you know, don't don't be spraying around. I asked them nicely. I wasn't a prick about it. And uh, so then I started doing this. There's a couple more of my little guys. It's a Takate Cypress. Takate Cypress planted those last winter. Here's Lavatera. Hey, Sergentiflora. Uh, Sergentiflora. Is it a flora or a folia? I always fuck that up. You get the point. Anyway, a Channel Island Mallow. 
a uh, couple of gaves they tend to do pretty good another quirky sagrifolia as long as it can weather that uh, that uh, that dry summer here's the Tecate cypress which is doing a uh, very good and of course these are just some tacky roses which uh, look like shit for about three quarters of the year but then once uh, in the spring once they get some water they do uh, they do uh, get some flowers on them but anyway uh, everything's just dependent on your region you know I'm in uh, coastal California it's a little bit different here uh, you know, if you're in upstate New York, you're going to have different planting uh, regimes. You're going to have different species. You're going to obviously have summer rain. You're going to have to not. You're going to have to worry about a little bit different things than I do. But uh, regardless, the mulch is important. Choosing your site is important. Staking it, protecting it from dogs and drunks and people pissing on it, dogs pissing on it. You know, and then of course taking into account uh, who's going to be pissed off by what you do. A lot of people have nothing better to do, so they worry about shit that doesn't affect them. You're not going to change them, but you should try to do outreach if possible. Talk to them, etc. Uh, you're going to lose a couple. That's just the uh, that's just the way it goes. You know, I, I'll grow. That's why I'll grow. You know, a hundred a day. Oh, I don't grow too much anymore. But back when I used to, I'd grow a hundred seedlings. Expect to lose half of them. You just got to keep doing it, doing. It. Yeah, if you end up with a surplus, you just give them away to people uh, at the end of the season. Okay, so everything here is mine except for this oak tree and uh, these uh, tacky rose bushes. So you know, again, what you got to do? You got to mulch. You got to you got to also dig down into that soil. See what the soil looks like down there. How you might have really good soil. You might have fast draining, rich hummusy soil. You also might have rocky bullshit like we got here. If that's the case, good thing to do is dig some holes and just take some compost. Real nasty. Uh, compost with a bunch of worms in it that smells like hell but is rich in nutrients throw that in the uh, holes and the worms will of course uh, you know dig through the soil break up all the rocky shit you got to make sure uh, you know you got some organic material in there too of course since I did put the compost in there apparently uh, I'd eaten a squash at some point and there were some squash seeds in the compost so you got to squash just the you know uh, volunteering right there uh, overall though I mean it works out pretty good you got some uh, salvia over there you got the Caranto from Montreal that's a hybrid all horticultural shit uh, not necessarily native but again uh, we're in a, a big urban toilet so it doesn't matter too much as long as it's, it's not invasive there's a big difference between non-native and not uh, you know non-native and invasive and anyway, moving right along here we go it looks like someone's uh, taking a mulch that's good so anyway here we go there's a uh, Guadalupe cypress that's actually a critically endangered plant and that did that, that is a tree grown from seed that was collected on the island on Guadalupe Island off the coast of Baja California uh, again mulch piles very important a lot of tree companies are just willing to get rid of their mulch piles for free they're really in point. It's an appropriated scooter. I like to think of it as force sharing. It's very uh, convenient. Over here, you got some, uh, you got another cypress, some uh, squashes, and a quercus rugosa, a Mexican oak. They don't do too well here, though, because they need the, the uh, wet summers. And then uh, right here, you know, you got, well, first off, you got the coast redwoods. They're dying. They look like shit. I think because they got the saline irrigation water here. And, uh, you know, redwoods. There's a reason they only occur naturally within a narrow band, uh, you know, within a, a mile of the coast in montane areas where the fog can accumulate and close to the Pacific Ocean. They don't do too well inland. You see them planted in the Central Valley. They look like shit. Uh, right over there, you got the uh, uh, relative of a dreaded London plane tree. That's the uh, California sycamore, a uh, platanus racemosa, easily one of our fastest growing trees in California. Now, of course, speed of growth is going to be an important thing. Uh, thing to think about if you're planting illegally the faster this gets big the less you got to worry about somebody destroying it most people uh, will not cons consciously try to destroy uh, things you plant of course people are generally assholes you'll never go wrong uh, overestimating their stupidity or maliciousness uh, but most people it seems don't bother or they kind of appreciate what you do it just depends uh, but uh so you want things that, that grow pretty fast you don't want something that's going to take 10 years to get four feet tall Growth rates matter. That, it's a California sycamore that does real good. Again, it grows in dry, uh, seasonally wet arroyos, so it can dry out. It can take these dry summers. You get another Guadalupe cypress, and just behind it, you got a Santa Cruz cypress. And you can see all the sea and notice that the city plant that died. I think because they stopped irrigating it. And you got another one of my uh, little, I just planted that guy a year or two ago. This is the Cotte cypress, uh, you know, grown from seed. Now, I, the thing the thing you got to focus on here, though, you see, it's it's all gonna. It just depends. What what species you grow is gonna depend entirely on uh, you know what uh, what region you live in. I like cypresses because they work for me, you know, because they can take those dry summers uh, pretty good. But again, not everything 
you know, and that, it's, it's going to be different. If you live in an area with uh, really cold winters and uh, wet summers, you're going to have to just uh, trial and error. That's all you got to do. Look it up, see what does well. And uh, also, the smaller you plant, the easier it's going to get established. If you're planting real big shit, it's going to take longer to get established because those roots got to get chopped up, you know, every time, uh, you know, you, you plant something. So if you're, if you're just planting little guys in one-gallon pots, you don't have to fuck with the roots too much. Whereas if you're planting the big stuff, especially, this is what people don't get about landscaping. Like these guys right here, these have, well, first off, they're not native chestnuts. They're native to areas uh, in the eastern U.S. with that, with the summer uh, rain. So they look like shit. But also, these have been here since I moved there 15 years ago, and they haven't grown maybe more than a couple feet. And it's because they planted them very large and when they, so they dug them out of the ground, the tree farm, and they severed all the roots, fucked up all the roots. It's probably spent the first three or four years in shock, didn't grow. Let's see what else we got. Oh, now this is important here. Look, look at what shit this soil looks like. There's absolutely, uh, it seems like nothing, uh, no organic material in it. It's just very rocky, barren, dry. Now, this is something I haven't got to yet. I would, if I could, I would have them do a giant mulch drop here and then just spread it out, you know, because this could use about a foot deep of mulch. You know, within four months, it would break down to about a quarter of that depth. And then uh, it would, of course, enrich the soil, especially if you get some worms and uh, other microbial activity, you know, uh, breaking down that mulch. Uh, mulch also prevents the sun from heating up the soil, and it keeps moisture inside that soil. You know, so it prevents uh, the, the bare ground from just evaporating all its moisture so quick. Okay, so real nice quick. You can see what they did here. I, I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, some nice concrete, bleak architecture. You can see all the trees that are planted here uh, are in various stages of death. Uh, you know, many have already died. I'd say at least half have already died over there. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why they chose this concrete planter thing. Uh, apparently, it didn't work too well for them. Again, oh, that, that tree's already a goner. Look, the bark's peeling off. So this is, this is you know, shit like this is why I kind of started doing my thing here. Uh, just, uh, yeah, I guess I also I kind of ran out of space in my own garden, so I had I needed a place to plant a lot of this stuff. Oh, you know what? All these are dead. <laughs> it's not even. I thought there was maybe one, but no, these are all these are all dead. Look at that. So anyway, you could see again the city dropped the ball. This this must have cost, uh, you know, at least uh, upwards of a couple million dollars when they planted all this stuff. And again, a lot of it just looks like shit. They dropped the ball. Uh, you know, probably somebody's friend got a nice. Uh, a nice uh, hand me that nice kick down from a uh, the the contract that got the past that the you know in terms of planting and uh, maintaining all this shit they obviously don't do a very good job but uh, you know whatever a lot of the people that are in charge of stuff around Oakland don't actually live here but uh, moving right along let's go see what else we got oh this is nice I haven't been here in a minute anyway so that's uh, that's another Guadalupe cypress that one seed grown by me that's about uh, I don't know, it's probably seven years old maybe. Uh, back there behind it you got a Takate cypress and you got another pine behind it you can't see and uh, uh, there's a little dying scrub oak right there and uh, I think behind it you got a, a baker cypress anyway like I said the cypresses do very well here uh, they're pretty low maintenance once you get them going and they're native so uh, you can't complain too much they're not going to break loose to get invasive or nothing like that uh, just you know whatever you decide to plant and I fucking hope you do uh, is going to be entirely dependent on uh, your region and uh, what's native there, what is it going to uh, prove to be a horticultural atrocity or uh, overly invasive. But you certainly should do this. I mean, just read about it. Uh, just trial and error. You know, you're going to fuck up a couple times. It's okay. Some shit dies. Whatever. You learn from it. You just uh, you just got to think about what you're doing and uh, see what works and what doesn't. Oh, this spot over here is one of my favorites. This is real nice. Here's one of mine. What's going on, brother? How you doing? Anyway. So this is, this was, you know, heavily neglected area, uh, and they, they didn't, you know, I don't know what, the, someone came through, planted a couple of these, like, they're either yuccas or that uh, New Zealand yucca, begins with a C, I forget the name of it. Anyway, whatever, they kind of overdid it with the fucking yuccas, but it doesn't matter, at least it's something. So you got the, this is a Ericaceae, this is a Arbutus uh, Unido, it looks like, which is the Mediterranean a Madrone. That was here, uh, these depressing formiums were here. And, uh, and what else? I think this was a volunteer. This Toyon, this is a native. This is just a volunteer. The birds eat the berries, shit it out. This is what Hollywood was named after. Except the berries are normally red. You can see uh, it's Rose family, of course, so it's got that uh, dentate leaf margin. Yeah, but let's not focus on it. The important thing is that uh, 
this was a prime spot because it was so heavily neglected for me to do my thing and plant a lot of these uh, trees, uh, which I did. This is a Tecate cypress, relatively rare one from uh, Southern California. Only five populations left in the United States, many of them threatened. They need wildfire, but it can't happen too frequently. They gotta get enough time in between fires to produce their cones, which look like little soccer balls are and are up there. And look at that, they get that beautiful red uh, bark, the peeling bark. You know, oh, look at you, just peel that shit back and you can see the nice red, red color. Uh, lemon scented foliage looks like a juniper, but it's not, it smells real nice. Over here, you got a similar uh, look alike. This is the endangered Guadalupe cypress. I came across seed of this. This only grows on Guadalupe Island off the coast of Baja, California. Grew these bastards from seed, I would say probably eight or nine years ago. And I just take, put them in a little one gallon or two gallon container, got them up to about yay high, don't you know? And uh, you don't want to get them, you don't want to leave them in a pot and they get too bigger than that. You want to plant them in, by the time they're about two or three feet tall. Stuck it in the ground right there. I had a stake around it and uh, planted it in the winter wet season. It does fine now. It's fucking 20 feet tall. Uh, this guy over there, it's a sergeant cypress. This in the wild only grows on serpentine, but they do fine off of serpentine. I think they're mostly stuck on the serpentine, which is a very weird uh, ultramafic rock uh, that we get in California. It's a very fascinating geological phenomenon uh, accreted to the, to the slab, to the edge of the continent uh, by a subduction zone, which, of course, there was a subduction zone off the coast of California before the San Andreas Fault was created roughly 30 million years ago. But, uh, but uh, that's, so this only grows on serpentine. Again, Sergeant Cypress, formerly Copressus sargentii, and now it's Hesperocypress sargentii after the mo uh, molecular phylogenetics and what the shit. And, uh, and this over here, a Santa Cruz Cypress, uh, this one, this uh, specific individual is uh, from Butano Ridge uh, population. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's actually a subspecies of Santa Cruz Cypress, and it's the only spot in the world that grows on Butano Ridge. Real pain in the ass to get there. It's about a, you know, 15-mile round-trip hike bushwhacking through shit. You know, you drag people with you, they start complaining, you know, easily a quarter of the way into the hike because it's most of it's uphill. And uh, what do we got down here? I think down here we got another sergeant cypress. Again, uh, you know, everything here was just, as long as you plant it in the winter, it's good. And again, that's not universal, just depends where you are. This just got a nice form to it. There was a that, that gentleman down there, he was living, he was living under here, but then part of it started to fall down. He's still got some of his stuff uh, stored in the tree over there. I don't know what he's doing. He's like shaving his bunions off or something, poor guy. Anyway. So this is, uh, you get the Sergeant Cypress looking real nice, and then there was another one over there that fell over. Actually, I think somebody uh, uh, drove drunk into it and knocked it over. And then, of course, Agave America, uh, Americana, just for shits and giggles, I had a couple of these laying around, went and threw them in the yard, in the uh, ground. You know, I, had, I took them out the yard, threw them in the ground. These bastards are great plants, you know, don't take them for granted. They really, you can see, it's already sending out clones and pups from the side. They grow fast as hell, and then, of course, they're monocarpic, so they flower once and die, and at the end of their season, you know, they send up a fucking 30-foot tall inflorescence with a bunch of flowers up top, and then the, the, that plant dies, and that's why it pups, you know. So this is an adaptation to being monocarpic. That's why many agaves, not all, but many do that. They send out side clones, little pups, you know. Yeah, see, this is where somebody, so somebody was driving drunk. It took me a minute. I got pissed off for a minute, but then I realized it was just a you know, a, a drunk driver, I thought it was intentional at first, but somebody was driving drunk, probably two or three in the morning, it came through, and it plowed, plowed over a bunch of this shit, and then knocked the tree over, and it died, but that's okay, that's fine, it was falling over anyway, so there'll be more, I, I got more of those, remember, you can't get discouraged when, you know, your shit dies, you just gotta grow more of it, you know, uh, just uh, be, uh, be like the case of uh, uh, lice in a kindergarten class, that you, uh, you, you wish you could be, you know, no, it's there. You're very hard to get rid of, you know, you just keep doing your thing and whatever. Here's a coast redwood I planted. This, this guy's probably fucked because they don't, uh, they don't do too well. You got to make sure someone's not stealing my friend's scooter, which he stole in the first place. Anyway, so this is a coast redwood. This is not going to do too well. It's just, it gets wet here. If the drainage isn't too good. So it's got that going for it because they do like the moisture. But again, it's just too hot. Oh, you know what? This is an actual yucca. It's not the uh, New Zealand one. It's an actual yucca. That's nice. You know, they went a little overboard and planted about 25 or 30. There was another gorilla gardener. I hate that term, but were, that's just what you call them, I guess. That's what, that's what people come up with. People know what you're talking about. Another coast live oak. Somebody planted this. So a bunch of people have just been uh, been planting stuff, you know. Uh, 
I don't know if they just saw me doing it or what. I don't give a shit. I'm glad, you know. I like people playing. As long as it's not invasive or too tacky, you know. Like, say, those uh, eucalyptus, which are out of place and getting out of control. Anyway, I'll show you a couple more things. I got to wrap this up. Oh, yeah. See, see this one died. It's the Quercus rugosa. Wonderful tree. Common in the cloud forests of Mexico. And they get fucking massive. But apparently... Uh, since the, the rain regime is completely different down in Mexico, they get winter dry, summer wet. We, of course, get winter wet, summer dry. Uh, this diet, it just didn't get enough water. Also, the soil kind of looks like shit that it's growing on. It could use some mulch. Uh, down here, though, you got a, a native species, native to the Sierra and Nevada mountains. And it goes, it goes, ranges on up into Idaho. This is Calocedrus decurrens, the incense cedar. Same family as redwoods and juniper. This is doing all right. Again, this is started this from seed about, I don't know, eight or nine years ago. I got some of the old uh, netting right there still to protect it so the, the, the you know, uh, semi-conscious uh, contractors don't uh, don't destroy it needlessly. That shit's not coming out now. It's stuck in the roots. But uh... anyway, so these do, these do pretty good and they can tolerate the pollution and, and whatnot pretty well. Anyway, so I, I got to get off this scooter now. It's kind of embarrassing to be seen on. You know, I used to feel a little bit worse riding it. I didn't really want to be seen on it. But, uh, you know, then I was out late at night on it. And uh, I saw a couple other people riding it around. And they were also, uh, they seemed to be engaged in criminal activity. So, in a way, it kind of uh, legitimized it for me. We gave each other the nod. This is probably at about 1 a.m., you know. So, uh, anyway, uh, if you don't want to get involved in, a, you know, doing a, the uh, illegal plant thing, I just unauthorized plant thing, you're helping out. Uh, I encourage you to do so. You know, obviously having uh, green things around uh, brightens any landscape, uh, which uh, in most cases in the United States, at least in the metropolitan United States today, uh, is very bleak. You know, you're just kind of supposed to expect it to, uh, you just expect it to work and die and, uh, and maybe buy some shit you don't need in between. So, you know, get, in, get yourself a hobby, learn a couple of things, uh, be nice to other people and uh, learn to grow some shit and you can plant it out. Uh, again, it just depends uh, where you're coming from. If you're gonna get, if you're gonna get soil, don't buy the soil. All right, find a way to get it on the cheap. You could buy it in bulk, or you can go. If you find like a place where they dump mulch on the bottom, if a, if a mulch pile has been there for a long time, get the get the stuff from the bottom of it, you know, and uh, and you can mix that with some perlite or pumice rock, you know. It, that's basically all that uh, most soil is anyway. If you buy it at a store, it's just decomposed wood decomposed cellulose with some organic matter worm castings and then something to increase drainage like uh, pumice rock or or uh, or uh, or perlite etc and what the shit anyway that's all i got for you today i'm gonna i'm gonna get off this scooter before somebody sees me and kicks my ass for riding it all right have a good day go fuck yourself bye